All right, everybody, welcome back to Average Aviator. I'm Travis, and today we're in my new hangar that I just acquired for the winter, and we're gonna talk about how my airplane looks terrible. No, <laughs> a little bit, but I've gotten a lot of questions about how I've stripped the airplane and uh, what I've done with the paint and how to make it look the way it does. So today, I'm gonna talk a little bit about stripping the paint off the airplane and then also a little bit on polishing the metal underneath. So let's make this airplane look a little bit better than it did yesterday. Well, first things first, why am I stripping the paint? Well, when I first got the airplane about three years ago, it had been sitting outside and the UV rays from the sun ate away at the white paint on the top surface of pretty much the entire plane. The wings were actually my main concern. The wings, you could run your hand across it and you would pick up paint chips on your hand. And I remember de-icing the plane one time to go on a cross country and you know I was removing ice from, from the wings but I remember the brush that I was using had a bunch of paint chips in it as well afterward. And I thought, you know, these paint chips that I'm coming up, you know, the surface is, is pretty similar to the frost that I'm removing. So, you know, is that great? I mean, it was flying fine, but but uh, I decided after that to go ahead and start stripping everything. So I stripped the top surface of the wings first, and once I was done with that, I noticed a relatively huge difference in terms of speed and, well, maybe not speed, but just efficiency. So then after stripping the wings, I figured the rest of the paint that's chipping off is doing probably the same thing, so I should probably get rid of those as well. So I ended up going through the whole plane and it was a process. It took me a couple years to get through uh, what I have done now. And now I have pretty much all of the old bad paint gone. Pretty much everything off the top surface. The bottom, because it was due to UV, the bottom surface of everything is actually pretty good. But today I'm gonna show you on a couple of the spots that I have left, all the things that I've learned <laughs> in the two years of trying to figure out how to strip this thing the best way I can. So, let's get to it. So one of the things that I've learned through this process is that stripping paint off an airplane is exactly what everybody says. It's tedious, it's annoying, but it can be oddly satisfying. One of the things that has made it so extremely frustrating is the fact that in the middle of when I started stripping all the paint off, the EPA outlawed the home use of strippers that had a certain chemical in it, but essentially that chemical was what uh, actually made those strippers work. So the stuff that you could find at Home Depot and everything like that uh, didn't work all of a sudden. And so I went through a period of a year trying to figure out what strippers worked and what strippers did not. And yes, I know that there are paint strippers that you can find on like aircraft spruce and other things like that, but they are typically, you know, $125, $150 a gallon. So I didn't want to just straight go right to that if I didn't have to. But eventually, I found some stuff that actually works and is only about $30 a gallon. If you're stripping, I don't have any endorsement, but if you're stripping an airplane, I do suggest this stuff. It looks just like a can, you know, it's just an aluminum can, it's nothing special, but PTI, high strength paint remover, the part number, <clears throat> this uh, 092979. That stuff, the, that's the stuff to get, because uh, it's only slightly more expensive than the stuff you'll find at Home Depot, like the orange goo, I've tried all that stuff, but it really practically does not work. That PTI works wonderfully. Some of the other things that I found extremely helpful when stripping the paint, aluminum foil and aluminum foil tape, which unfortunately I don't know why I don't have with me today, but I don't, um, but I don't think I'll need it today. And then these guys right here brass brushes. So there are a couple of considerations you have to think about when you're going to strip an airplane and the main one is corrosion. And so a lot of things that I have found uh, that work for the airplane work because it not only strips the paint fast, it also does it without leaving the risk of corrosion. So one thing you definitely do not want to do when stripping the airplane is have something steel touch the metal, like using steel brushes or using a steel scraper. I was using plastic scrapers for a while and that worked 
okay on horizontal surfaces that had paint that was really, really rough on them. But when I got to the vertical paint that wasn't in terrible shape, it did not work at all. So I found that you can use brass brushes and those work extremely well and they don't leave little steel shavings that embed themselves in the aluminum and then corrode it because that's what will happen if you use a steel brush. All right, now the, <laughs> before we begin, let's get into a little bit of safety stuff just to make sure that you don't uh, have a bad day. And number one thing that I've learned is always have a water source or a bucket of water handy <laughs> when you're doing this stuff because if the stripper goes anywhere that you don't want it to, water is going to be your friend. Water is what uh, dilutes it or um, neutralizes it, I guess would be the right word. So definitely have uh, some water. You should also probably have some safety goggles, especially if you're using the brass brushes, just to make sure it doesn't fling in your eye, because that'll also make it have a bad day. Fortunately, I don't have any safety glasses here, so do what I say and not what I do. And then <laughs> make sure you're doing it in a ventilated area. Um, the stuff that is now legal shouldn't have any dangerous fumes, but I've got the hangar door open, and, um, and I'm you know, if it was in a hot day or something or the wind wasn't blowing the correct direction, I put a fan in here or something just to make sure I wasn't inhaling anything. So <laughs> I would show doing this on uh, a better area, but I've pretty much stripped the entire airplane now. And the airplane is now in f and for an annual and I pulled some panels and there's some stuff underneath the panels that I had missed. So let's, uh, it actually is, it's also a vertical surface. So let's actually be a good demonstration because the vertical surface is the harder harder of the two. Also, before we begin, I want to caveat by saying I'm not a professional. This is just uh, the stuff that I've learned well the couple years of figuring out how to strip my airplane. So I'll probably say things that are wrong or there's probably better ways to do something, but the question was how do I do the stripping on my airplane? So this is how I do it and this is how I've, I've learned is the best way. But um, if you have a better way, then feel free to comment. So first I'm going to cover up what I don't want to uh, get with the stripper. Ideally it'd be with aluminum foil tape, but I don't have aluminum foil tape right now So I've just got some painters tape and the stripper will go right through this painters tape So I've also got some aluminum foil and I'm just gonna tape the aluminum foil underneath here and that should work pretty well So because this is a vertical surface the stripper is just gonna want to run down the side um, this stuff works, this uh, PTI stuff that I showed in the beginning works really well, but it's a little runny. If I could, I would get something that was just cheap and works just as well, but it's a little bit thicker. And I guess theoretically I could experiment with trying to thicken it up, but, um, but for right now this is what we got. So because it's a little runny, I'm going to use my, um, my brass brush here. I'm going to dip it into the bottle of the stripper and then I'm going to just, you know, kind of shake it out, just get a little bit and start at the top and then work my way down and it should run down. Um, if it was a horizontal surface, it's a lot easier because all you'd have to do is just pour a little bit out under the surface and spread it around and then, you know, just wait for it. But because it's vertical and because it wants to run, you do have to babysit a little bit more. So. So you're going to want to cake it on because if it's just a couple of lines streaking down, it's going to only eat up that couple of lines. You actually want it to be a little bit thicker, which is why it's difficult to do the underside or to do the vertical surfaces. So once you've applied the, uh, the stripper, I mean, pretty much just wait. It just depends on the temperature and how much you caked it on and the condition of the paint as to how long it takes. The colder it is, the longer it's going to take, the warmer it is, the easier it comes off. So I'm just going to apply a little bit more and then I'll come back and show you. It's kind of already peeling up on some of the white, but um, once it's all completely peeled off, I'll come back and show you what it looks like. All right, so while our paint stripper is working and has time to work, I'm going to show how I make that bare metal and turn it a little bit nicer by polishing it up. So what I have behind me is actually uh, this part right here. I don't know if you can see the difference between this and this. This was polished about a year ago and this was never polished. So I stripped 
the blue stripe off of the wing here and it leaves, whenever I strip it, it leaves this kind of matte, I don't know if matte is the right word, but it leaves a, a dull aluminum and sh polishing it up will make it shine a little better. Mine's not like the mirror finishes that you see on some people's airplanes because, well, it sat outside for a while and I don't have that kind of time, but it does, it is better than nothing if you're going to strip the paint in the meantime. So I have a little bit of time, I'm gonna polish this up. So to polish it, I use Brightworks. There's a bunch of different products you can use. Brightworks, uh, Nuvite, I know is another good one. Um, I think Mothers makes some really good ones as well. So, um, but I have some Brightworks here. That's what I'm gonna use. A lot of them have a three step process. I'm only using the first step because mine has a little bit of pitting and some other you know, surface blemishes that you know, making the mirror finish doesn't really matter anyway. So, these Brightworks and you just need uh, a buffer with ideally a cleaner one than this, but with a uh, wool pad, I use like, I use the wool ones, it seems like it works the best. And then I just got a Harbor Freight, I know, make fun of me, a Harbor Freight uh, buffer right here. It works pretty well. So polishing isn't really that hard, it's just a little time consuming. What you're gonna need is just a rag and take your Brightworks polish that has been sitting, mine is a little worse for wear, and just take a corner of the rag and wrap it around like this and then just get a little bit of the polish on there and you take your polish and just kind of scrape like rub around where you want you don't need a big giant glob like that that's not really necessary but it just needs to be wiped around the area really you can just follow the direction and you want to do a section at a time because you don't want a giant thing uh, to polish because by the time you get to it, it'll, it'll get dried out and then that's never good. So. Alright, so now that you've got your section covered in your, uh, in your polish, you're just going to take your buffer, I mean obviously turn it on, try to find a setting that works. Um, typically I start with a lower RPM and then work my way up to a higher RPM and then you just want to do a couple patterns around. And it's okay if you miss it first, it's going to leave a layer of black down and then it's okay, you don't have to get ever, all of that black off. You just have to uh, just get it to where, just keep going until it looks shiny underneath, essentially is what I do. You will have some black streaks left, when even when it's shiny and you won't be able to get them out with your buffer, then you go back with a clean cloth and you wipe those down, it should come back, uh, come out pretty shiny. So let's try it. So that's what it looks like after it's all polished. We're gonna take our clean rag, we're gonna go over, get some elbow grease as well. Especially around the rivets. Clean up all this excess polish. So there you go. So that's polishing it. Um, like I said, I'm not a professional, so I'm probably doing something wrong, but that's what I do. That's what works for me. It's not perfect by any stretch of the imagination, but it's definitely way better than it was. So now that, now that we're done stripping it, let's go back to the paint and see how that's doing. All right, so it's been about 20, 25 minutes, maybe 30 minutes at the most, and you can see that a lot of the paint like here is bubbling up. The white is definitely the worst paint of it all. I mean, it's it's the easiest to come off. And so that's, it's bubbling up a lot on this side, but this side, not so much. Got a little bit, 
and then the magenta is kind of coming up as well. This is what the magenta will do, the magenta and the blue. If it's you've left it long enough or caked enough on, it'll just peel itself off essentially, but sometimes you have to go in there and coax it. With this side, I don't think I put on is enough or it's just a little bit more stubborn. So it looks like it might be a little bit more difficult. So when the paint's being stubborn, kind of like it is, that's where this really comes in handy. Some of it will just slough right off, right off like that. But other stuff like this blue here, you might need to scrape either up and down or, or uh, side to side or, I don't know, just scrape with whatever you have and <laughs> try to get it off. Another way that I've found that uh, also helps apply this stuff pretty easily is a paintbrush. You can use this as an old paintbrush and try not to get one too obnoxiously big unless you're dealing with a big surface, but a paintbrush will work pretty well as well. Alright, so it's a little bit later and it looks like the uh, last of the bit has been I'm able to get off if I just use a little bit of elbow grease. Alright, so now that we have everything off, I'm going to just uh, wipe it down with some uh, water. Make sure that all of the stripper is neutralized and there's nothing left on it. It also helps get some of the excess paint off there. And then if I want to, I can hit it with some scotch Bright to make it look a little bit nicer, but because the panel is going to be going right on over this, um, I think I won't really mess with it until I have to paint it, so. Well, there you have it. That's uh, how I strip and polish the airplane. Slowly but surely, we're making this thing look a little bit better than it did when I got it. So, hopefully, uh, once I'm done with the annual, there'll be more flying. And uh, if I find anything interesting on the annual, I'll definitely be sure to take a video of it. But hopefully, this annual goes out flawlessly and I, have, I don't have to do any major repairs. And as always, thanks for watching. And... Uh, if you like this kind of content, please consider subscribing, and I'll see you.